what up guys it's your boy Ali and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. Now in 1999, Ja Rule released his first studio album under Murder Inc. Records called Veni Veti Vici. The album was a commercial success. It came in at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and sold 185,000 copies in the first week. After the album dropped, Murder Inc. was officially on the map. They started to dominate the airwaves at an alarming rate and some even say the label became even more popular than Rockefeller and Bad Boy Records. During this time, Murder Inc. experienced a lot of growth. They started to look for new artists and one of the acts that got signed to the label was Levita Rayner, Kimmer Rayner's sister, also known as Vita. Vita. Before Vita joined Murder Inc., she appeared in a movie called Belly. It's the night before us. You what? The movie was directed by Hype Williams and stars rappers DMX and Nas. In her first acting role, Vita played DMX's side piece. She got the role after auditioning three times. They were looking for a 16-year-old who was feisty for Belly. I auditioned three times and got the role of DMX's girl on the side. When I got the role, I thought I was going to be doing Mo. But when the movie got cut, there was only a bedroom scene and a car scene. Now Vita played DMX's side piece very well. I believe she owned the role. But acting aside, her connection to Hype Williams was a catalyst that got her into the world of hip hop. At the time, Vita was being managed by Hype Williams. He introduced her to Irv and Ja Rule on the video shoot for Method Man and D'Angelo's Breakups to Makeups video. Initially, Vita was only supposed to appear on Irv Gotti Presents, The Murderers album, but after she proved herself to the gang as far as rapping goes, she got signed to Murder Inc. Hype, who was my manager at the time, introduced me to his colleagues, which were Irv Gotti and Ja Rule. I met them at a video shoot. I was supposed to only be featured on Irv Gotti Presents The Murderers album, but they wanted me to sign and be a part of Murder Inc. During her time on Murder Inc, Vita achieved a reasonable amount of success. She appeared on several hit records such as Down For You and Put It On Me. Vita put in a lot of work in at Murder Inc. However, despite her best efforts, she failed to release a solo album under Murder Inc. Records. Over the years it seems like Vita has disappeared off the map, she hardly does interviews and she's not putting out any new music. So the question is, what happened to Vita? Now a lot of people assume that the reason Vita's album didn't come out is because her mother passed away. It was reported Vita took time away from hip hop because she wanted to heal. But according to the ex-Murder Inc. artist, that's not true. At the time, Vita felt like she wasn't in control of her own career. She was a new artist on Murder Inc. and felt like a small fish in a big pond. Vita felt like her album didn't come out because of label issues. More specifically, she was not in control of her career. The album not coming out wasn't because of my mom passing away. There was a lot of stuff going on in Murder Inc. that was out of my control. I couldn't push the button. A lot of things happened within the crew that didn't permit for things to happen or for albums to come out. I was new to the team, so I couldn't dictate. Things were out of my control. I don't think it was because I wasn't talented. If I didn't, Hype Williams wouldn't have signed me. I believe it was about timing. Speaking of label issues, one reason why Vita's career didn't take off is because Irv paid too much attention to Ja Rule. Like Jay-Z and Rockefeller, the entire label was built around one artist and in a situation like this, the flagship artist usually gets the most attention from the label. At the time, Vita had a moderate buzz and didn't have a full project out. Vita felt like her singles were hot and her fan base was growing, however she feels like she wasn't getting enough support from the label and as a result she began to grow frustrated. I just felt like damn. Why isn't my album coming out? I did some singles that were hot, but Irv was working with Ja. Now according to Irv, his relationship with Vita eventually turned sour. He claims Vita got big headed and wanted to do things her own way because she didn't think she was getting enough attention from the label. Vita started getting a big head, started talking crazy. I want to do this, you don't know what the f*** you're doing. Now in my opinion, Vita got sidelined when Ashanti and Charlie Baltimore joined Murder Inc. Before they joined the label, Vita was the first lady of Murder Inc. After years of grinding, it seemed like her album was about to drop any second. However, it kept getting pushed back. I believe this happened because Irv thought he was onto something, literally, when he signed Ashanti. Irv knew Ashanti was going to be successful, but her being that successful, that fast, threw him off. It was difficult for him. It seems like Irv's desire to push Ashanti and Charlie Baltimore ultimately meant that Vita got less attention from the label. If Vita's album dropped, she might have done decent numbers. But unfortunately for her and her fans, we'll never get to find out. Speaking of label politics, Vita's career suffered a huge setback when she couldn't clear a sample for her album. In 1991, 
Madonna released a song called Justify My Love. Waiting for you to justify my love. To date, it's one of her most successful songs. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 100 and spent two weeks at that position. Why am I talking about Madonna, you ask? Well, Justify My Love was remade by Vita and Ashanti and featured on the Fast and Furious soundtrack in 2001. Vita made two versions of Justify My Love. One version was identical to Madonna's original hit. That version ended up on the Fast and Furious soundtrack, while the other version has Vita rapping on the track. I decided to do it to show my versatility. I love Madonna's voice and I thought my voice would sound hot on it. Coincidentally, Madonna cleared the version of Justify My Love that was similar to her own, but she wasn't feeling Vita's rapping version. In any case, Vita is thankful that she got to work on a song with Madonna. She isn't bitter, however I'm sure she wonders what would have happened if the rapping version of Justify My Love came out. It was an honor for me to remake something that she's done. I'm also a big fan of Lenny Kravitz, who co-wrote the song, so the combination of the two was just great. This was a turning point in Vita's career. The version of Justify My Love that got released didn't get a lot of attention. In fact, if you listen to the song, it sounds like a complete knockoff of the original. Vita knew this. She recorded a rapping version of Justify My Love because she wanted to make the song her own, but after Madonna shut her down, she had no choice but to let the song die. Vita regrets not having a lawyer during her time at Murder Inc. She didn't know much about the business because she was a kid. Clearly Vita believes that if she had better legal representation back then, she would be in a better place today. I'd cross my T's and dot my I's. I'd make sure I use the money I'm making to have a lawyer. When you're young, you don't have money. Make sure you have a great lawyer on your team. Learn to be a better business person, even if you have to take some classes. Also, Vita learned how to be her own person and how not to rely on other people. To her, the label didn't do enough for her as an artist and she blamed herself for putting her career in their hands. It appears Hype Williams got upset with Irv Gotti for constantly pushing Vita's album back because at the time Vita felt like her career wasn't going anywhere and she was fighting a battle that wasn't hers. They're both businessmen and I can say that of course is accurate. He's going to feel the way he feels. That's why I told you I've been stagnated for a while and I'm fighting a war that's not my war. Now a lot of people assume that Vita leaving Murder Inc. has something to do with 50 and Ja Rule's beef. However, that's not true. Vita left Murder Inc. right before 50's attacks became brutal. That made it more reason to get down with her. She was there. She knows firsthand, and she just missed that 50 tongue lashing. They dropped her off Murder Inc. right before 50 ripped a hole in their ass, which still gave her a lot of life in the rap game. Had she been Charlie Baltimore and stuck around for that shit, then she would be dead. And she's talented. She write her shit that much raw. For a while, it looked like Vita was going to be a prominent member of the game's record label Black Wall Street. The game would speak about her in interviews, and to the fans, it looked like Vita was about to make a comeback. Yeah, we're going through some things with Vita right now, and I really won't speak on it. But she's a woman that really hasn't gotten a chance to voice her lyrical skill because of the downfall of Motor Inc. at the time. It seemed like Vita had the game's co-sign. It looked like she was about to drop a project under Black Wall Street. However, as we all know, it didn't materialize. Now around 2011, Vita seemed determined to make a comeback. And for the first time in a while, Vita did an interview. For the females, actually, because it's a lot of females that's doing their thing right now. Like, we give it up, mom, let's get money. Vita spoke in length about how being away from the game has affected her. She said she was stronger than ever after leaving Murder Inc. And she was determined to prove to her fans that she can still make a hit. I love the fact that I gotta start over. Because you know why? I still love myself. I'm stronger. I've been through a lot. And that's where your mentality got to be. Because depending on the state, city, or town you're in, people look at you differently. I'm back. I'm starting over again because I'm looking for that respect. When Put It On Me was big, kids were like six, seven years old. Times have changed, so I have to make them like something else. Navita did her best to make a comeback. In 2012, she released a mixtape called Pre. The project is 14 tracks in length and barely has any features. It appears Vita was using Lil Wayne's formula of rapping over beats that were already used. It seems like Vita was trying to let her fans know that she can rap over modern beats and still sound good. And for the most part it works. Vita sounded hungry. Vita fans should have been all over this project. However, it seems like most of them didn't even know that it came out. For a brief moment in time, Vita worked on music overseas. In 2017, she teamed up with European rapper CHG Unfadeable and released a few songs. 
Never see me dance on a dance hall Never see me wine on a dance hall My milkshake bring all the boys out Vita hops in and out of the music scene when she sees fit. It works for her. However, it's no secret that she isn't dropping enough music to keep up with the attention span of today's listeners. Lately, it doesn't seem like Vita is releasing any new music. As far as her social media goes, Vita doesn't seem to have a Spotify page, which is a shame because she's missing out on a lot of streaming revenue. Vita's YouTube page has about 104 subscribers and her Instagram has about 40,000 followers. Vita and Murder Inc. managed to sort out their differences. Both parties knew that there was more money to be made as a team and as a result, Vita returned to her Murder Inc. family. Now one thing I didn't mention earlier is that Vita's Murder Inc. album called La Dolce Vita was released as a free mixtape after she left the label and it can be found on Dead Piff. That's it for me man, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Vita in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also if you have any of your requests, be sure to let me know as well. Peace.